Welcome to our podcast series, Talking with Traders, hosted by expert trader Garth McKenzie in London, from where he's interviewing various guests on the topic of trading. Welcome back to Talking with Traders. This is the fifth season of the podcast to take us up to the end of 2022. Thanks to all our loyal listeners for returning and welcome to all our new listeners. As before, IG Markets have come on board as sponsors of this podcast. We're truly grateful to have such an award-winning CFD provider as sponsor alongside us. In this season, I'll welcome back some guests from the previous seasons of the podcast to get their updated market views. And we'll also be bringing in some new guests to the microphone too. As always, the aim with these podcasts is to give you the opportunity to listen to differing market views and to assist you with your own trading and investing education. So with that in mind, let's get straight into another episode of Talking with Traders. Welcome to another episode of Talking with Traders with me, Garth McKenzie. This week, it gives me great pleasure to welcome a guest from Melbourne, Australia. Her name is Louise Bedford. And um, I'm going to read this because this is a great intro. I mean, Louise is the best-selling author of five books on the stock market. She's a behavioral finance expert and has degrees in psychology and business. She's been running the six-month repeat-for-free mentor program called tradinggame.com.au and that's been going since the year 2000 so 22 years and she's also the founder of her own podcast talkingtrading.com.au which is a free weekly podcast around trading and trading psychology so with that intro welcome to you louise i've really been looking forward to this conversation uh someone different we haven't had too many guests from australia on uh, talking with traders you're the second guest i've had from that part of the world welcome what a pleasure to be on your show. I love, love your show, Garth. I have been binging ever since it came across my desk. Oh, well, that's great to hear. Thank you. And likewise, I'm, I'm very impressed with the work that you've done over there as well. And, uh, and, and thoroughly looking forward to talking to you about this. What really interests me is that you've got a degree and you've got very highly qualifi qualified in, in psychology. Um, and trading is yeah, pick a number, but anything, 80%, 90%, whatever, it's a high number of what it takes to become a successful trader. A lot of people think, you know, it's your method and what technical analysis you're using and all of that. Yes, those things obviously are important, but those are just the, the, the tools. And it's really the psychology and your own personal psychology that determines whether you're successful or not as a trader. So, you know, and, and that's why it's so great to be speaking to you. So with that, I guess, let's lead into that first question. I mean, why is psychology so important in trading? Oh, look, I think a lot of people underestimate this, especially when they start out. They think, well, it has to be all due to the system that they're making money. But all it takes is a few hard knocks in the markets or maybe even some exceptional profits. And then they start to realise, oh, this mindset thing, it's got a lot to do with my success. So I really enjoy educating people about psychology. It's one of the few areas that we have complete control over what goes on between our ears. So I want to give you four reasons why traders really need to improve their psychological fitness. The first one is it allows you to explore new fields and to be adventurous. There's so much information about having a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And of course, we want to be on the growth mindset arena. And the way to do that is by allowing yourself to be humble and learning a new field. Number two, it improves resilience. There are so many blows in the market. We are in an area that has constant grind and also very ambiguous feedback. So we need to be resilient to stand up to those types of arrows that are being flung at us from the markets. Number three, it keeps you humble. 
The research suggests that overconfident traders make much less money and blow themselves up. So that's a real key. And by keeping us humble, learning about our mindset, making sure that we endure, that is really the key to developing true wealth. And the last reason is it helps you learn from your past mistakes. I was with a wonderful trader over dinner one night, Dr. Alexander Elder, mm -hmm. and he's a Russian gentleman. I'm sure you would have read his oh, book, yes. oh, yeah. several books, actually. Yeah. And he said to me, just make sure, Louise, make sure that you don't step on the same rake twice. I loved it. So that is the real key. And that's really why I think trading psychology can help. The research backs this up. Unfortunately, around about 80% of traders never go on to make significant money. 1% only achieve predictable long-term gains in the market. So there are some studies that I can quote. And the way that it all pans out because these studies are backed by large numbers and also over time is that successful traders have found a method of developing an edge and to develop that edge we have to look after our mindset so if we stay in the arena for long enough we're likely to be more successful yeah, absolutely. So well said. Now, I've heard you talk about the term psychological fitness, all right? And I, I, what do you mean by that exactly? Let's unpack that a little bit more. Yeah, this is actually my own creation. I always like making up terms for things that I don't think actually exist in reality. So this one has come into my vernacular. Psychological fitness, I think of fitness as in health fitness, where we go to the gym and we work out. And sure, sometimes it can cause a bit of pain because we're breaking down those little muscle fibers and rebuilding. And psychological fitness is the same. Sure, there can be some short-term pain involved with growing our mindset but once we've grown our mindset we never return to that original condition so that psychological fitness I think is really important and I've managed to break this down into a few different areas so should I go through that Garth so yeah that let's go through it you know because it's a it's an yeah. important point and uh, you know the, I guess the questions are how do you become psychologically fit and how do you keep it because as you said it's it's you know, we, we understand how to be physically fit you go to the gym you work out you eat well you you know make sure you're well hydrated those are all physiological things and actually those do indeed tie back into your psychology as well but how do you exercise your psychological brain how do you keep you know fit psychologically what do you do yeah, look, number one, it comes down to managing your emotions. You know, we are just little bags of emotion in the end, aren't we? We're not that far down from coming out of the caves, coming down from the trees. If yeah. you really look at us, we have flights of incredible victories and we're full up on endorphins and the world just seems to be our oyster and that can be a difficulty. Yeah. But we also have the struggle where things aren't going right and everybody else is making money but we're not making money and how dare they mm. we might look very competitively to the traders beside us and instead of encouraging each other sometimes we can rip each other down so managing emotions is number one number two is habit formation now I was always interested in habits because I've noticed that until something becomes a habit we speak spend a lot of our time trying to create that bit of experience for ourselves we have to go through step by step and nothing's on autopilot whereas with habits as soon as we can develop a good habit everything goes on autopilot we stop using our working memory as much it frees up our brain for other aspects of our life and it just makes life so much easier Number three is your trading DNA. And by DNA, I don't actually mean that there are born traders. I actually don't believe there are any born traders. What I'm meaning is we need to look at our inherent fixed qualities. Now, some people, when I started trading, Garth, 
I was one of very few women who were trading back then. I started trading in 1990 and I remember my uncle telling me, my uncle, a relative, telling me, Louise, you're a woman. You are never going to make it. Just give up now. (laughs) Goodness me. So, yes, I mean, it really was quite nice as a personal vendetta to show him when I got my first book published, I sent him a copy and I said, thanks for all of your support. Do you know what he said, Garth? He mm-hmm. said, I always knew you could do it. <laughs> yes. Maybe that was his way of psychologically <laughs> encouraging you on, right? Let's put, uh-huh. a, put a challenge out there. <laughs> so we need to think in terms of our inherent qualities and how we handle that. So things like your gender, your age, your IQ, are there fixed qualities that mean that we can't be an effective trader? And luckily for all of those areas, the research says there is no reason why you personally cannot make money. The good news is that the market is an equal opportunity employer. If you put in the right levels of work and you focus on your trading system and your own mindset, you have stacked the odds in your favor of trading successfully. That's what we're after. Mm. So I'm up to pillar number four, which is recovery. Okay. Now, recovery is a big area. This is recovering from the grind of trading, but also recovering when things go wrong. Now, there are a lot of things we can do to influence our own levels of recovery. Some people, I don't know how you feel about this, Garth, but I won't be doing this in any circumstance some people even say ice baths have you heard of that i have heard of that yeah i've heard of that and cold showers and things oh look each to their own right and <laughs> and, and 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 i think that to your point i mean i think you've got to trade to your psych you've got to trade to your personality right you do um, you do and find a style yeah. of trading uh, that suits your personality and we're all different so some will be high frequency traders, some will be more position traders, um, not wanting to sit in front of the screen all day, every day. So there are a variety of different types of people. And and I guess you've got to find that style of trading that fits your personality. And and hey, if if you're that type of person that likes to take an ice bath, I actually know a guy who does this type of thing. Uh, weird stuff, but he's incredibly disciplined. I'll say that much. He's a very, very disciplined person. Um, and he does these weird and wonderful things to try and keep himself on track and make him psychologically strong. And he is psychologically strong for it, actually. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for finding your own way. I'm more of a breathing techniques and meditation type of chicky babe. I enjoy having a set routine that I can follow. And that to me suits me and it sets me up well for success. I have got things that I do the same thing in the same order absolutely every time before I even put on a trade. So it's almost like a psychological contract that Mm. I've made with myself to stop myself from backing off from the challenge of trading. You know, sometimes I've found when I've had a few losses in a row, Mm. I can have that trade reluctance. I can have that feeling that, oh, I don't know if I want to go in again. Mm. So if I've got that set routine, that can really help me and it just pushes me over to find that next outlier profit. And that's what we're after. That's it. It's about process, isn't it? Exactly. And the word you you used is routine. I mean, can you take us through that a little bit? Because I'm big on that as well. Big on having a routine, a pre-market routine routine um, and then basically so that you once you're in the market once the market's trading you're there you kind of act out a plan a trading plan that was deciphered or determined in your routine beforehand and then there's of course the as you've said the recovery routine what happens afterwards I mean are you able to take us through that a little bit just give us a a bit of a morning routine what sort of things do you do before the market opens pre-trade routine I'm just going to reach over here onto my bookshelf I've got a little guy here who's going to help me Here we go. Now, this is my little stock bot. For those of you following along with the audio, I'm holding up a little metal robot up to the camera. Mm -hmm. He has got 
very impassive eyes, a little straight mouth. He's so cute, isn't he? Isn't he yeah, gorgeous? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is my little stock bot. And before I put on each trade, I look over to him and I just imagine that I'm the robot. I'm very calm. I'm not subject to confusing signals. I'm breathing deeply. And I put my order into my position sizing spreadsheet. And my next automatic reaction is to open my package. So I open the charting program and I open the trading platform and bang, I'm in the market. Yeah. So from using my little prop here, a lot of people use something similar. They consider it to be a talisman in athletics. You might have seen many of the athletes take the same types of processes before. Some do a little deep breath, some do a little turn in a circle, others do some weird ritual whatever it takes to get you going that is the thing that you can do again and again to calm your mind put your trading on autopilot and make sure that you're focused right um super i mean i i, I love that and i love the fact that as you say try and trade like a robot what i've also seen and read many times is almost to try and see yourself from a third person perspective so when you're trading you're not you know, almost like this out of body experience trade as if someone was watching over your shoulder and telling you, or if you were watching over your own shoulder, for example, and trying to give you guidance on what to do. I mean, is that little robot, is that, is he like the the little guy on your shoulder, I suppose, watching over yes. the little policeman, making sure you do the right thing, making sure that you stick to the position size, making sure you've put the stop loss in and the target and that everything is done according to a structure. That accountability is something that a lot of people need to be able to excel, and I love that. Actually, it's interesting you use that phrasing when I was presenting about the markets in Malaysia. The MC there, he actually said in Malaysia there's a saying, a child is watching, and the idea is it's to keep all of the adults aware that the methods that they're using in their day-to-day -day life are actually being observed by the next generation. Mm -hmm. So it is that type of accountability. I think it's really important. And the other area that I think is very important in terms of psychological fitness is inspiration. Now, I think of it in two ways. Firstly, high performance psychology. So there could be Olympians, there could be rally car drivers that you're mm. inspired by. Mm. I love looking at rock climbers. I mean, how do they do that and manage to overcome their own nerves? Yeah. There are so many high performance psychology areas to be inspired by. And of course, the market wizards other exceptional traders. We look to them as inspiration, as role models, and we aim to not only duplicate their trading methods, because I think that is one, one way of looking at things, but we should also look to see how do they live their life? What are they doing with their mindset? This is why your show is so great too, because you're allowing people that glimpse behind the curtain so that people can see themselves in the guests that you bring onto your show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. We're all humans at the end of the day. And although some traders might appear superhuman, they're not. They're still human. They're still subject to the same emotions and what have you. Are there some people who just can't trade, though? I mean, you've kind of said, no, nobody, you know, there, there, there's a personality style for everybody, and therefore there's a style of trading for everybody. Maybe I'm preempting the answer here, but I mean, have you come across people in your work who you just think, Ah, oh, this guy's got no chance. He's never going to make it. You should might as well give up now. Have you encountered people like that? Do you believe that there are some people who just can't trade or, or not? Look, I am a bit outspoken with this, to be open with you, Garth. My business partner in my other website, tradinggame.com.au, is Chris Tate, and he's very much the sergeant major type of person, and he is constantly amazed that I'm still confused when people let me down because I'm such an optimist. <laughs> you would think <laughs> by this age I would have worked that out. But I find that there's inspiration in Ed Sakota words. Ed Sakota was a market wizard. 
Mm-hmm. Amazing man. He's very well worthwhile Googling. He has some amazing eccentricities as well that you might like to follow in terms of his musical taste. Mm-hmm. Ed is so well renowned and he says that for a trader to be successful, he or she must love to trade and love to win. Now, I have seen thousands of traders looked at thousands of trading plans, having traded since 1990, but also been involved with trader education for 25 plus years. I found it fascinating to see that that is truly the tenant of success. If you want this badly enough, you will work out how to get it. Yeah, I guess that's it, right? And I love what you said about loving to win because that is it. You've got to feel like a winner. If you if you come at this scared, feeling like a a loser, well, you're going to lose, right? So it's and it comes back to that psychology. What about energy? You know, a lot of traders that I've come across in my work, well, they're mostly quite energetic people. I guess it comes back to what you say about being ambitious, having that winning nature about you. How do you keep up energy as a trader? Because this can be quite tiring. It can be a taxing business. And there are times it can knock you down. I mean, we've all experienced that any trader, any successful trader will know. You go through ups and downs. It's a bit of a roller coaster. At times, you can have a cluster of winning trades where you feel on top of the world. But at the same time, you can also come across a cluster of losers. And that kind of dents your confidence. How do you overcome that? How do you keep up that positive energy, that winning attitude Mm. as a trader. Yeah, you described that so well. I think there are so many things that are against our human nature for us to be able to overcome, to be able to be a successful trader. One of the major, perhaps a try this at home tip, if if you'd like to start off with a try this at home tip with this, is to take a pause. Mm -hmm. Now, I love yoga. I've been involved with yoga since I was a very little girl and I find it wonderful for developing my mind as well as my body. One of the things in yoga that I really enjoy is that sometimes you have to hold a pose that is physically uncomfortable and you have to breathe through it. And you need to pause before you just let yourself fly off the handle and say, no, I can't do this. It's such a mind twist to be able to get through that physical pain. And I love helping my traders take a pause. And an example of this is I've watched so many different traders put on orders. They'll open their trade platform and they'll get ready to place the order and you know what they do Garth they take a deep breath in and they hold their breath Mm. now if there's one time that we ever need our breath is when we're placing an order we need clarity of thought we don't want fat fingers where we punch in the wrong number Mm. I've done it everybody's done it as a Mm. trader let's face it (laughs) we want that clarity so remembering to breathe remembering to pause there is no rush calming down and slowing down I think is a beautiful lesson from the yoga world to the trading world Mm. Yeah, love how you put that. And what about habits? I mean, we talked earlier about routine um, and that sort of thing, but give us an idea of some of the the right type of habits that you think one needs to form to be a successful trader. Yes, there are quite a few that we need to cultivate. I do like, there's a quote from Brett Steenberger, maybe it's Barger, actually. Mm. We all know him, though. (laughs) Well known. Well known in the trading world. Yeah. He's been on my show as well, talkingtrading.com.au. He's an amazing, amazing gentleman. He said the right trading behaviors start as rules and Mm. evolve into habits. Yeah. Now, I love that. So let's think of what that means. First of all, we need a written trading plan. I would guarantee if you IQ tested me while I've got money in the market compared to when I have no money in the market, my IQ would be so much lower when there's money in the market. (laughs) It's 
almost like you can't hear the market signals because you're thinking about your greed, your fear, is this going to work? All of your self-doubt. So we need to develop habits to overcome our own human fallibilities. Now, I'll perhaps give you a framework to think about habits because I think this can really assist. A habit, first of all, has to be easy to measure. So you have to know whether that is actually a genuine habit. It has to have some sort of boundary around it. Secondly, it has to be something you can do frequently or immediately. And I often think about when I'm trying to change the clock because of daylight savings, mm -hmm. I only do that twice a year. I can't remember how to do it. That isn't something that's a good idea for a habit. <laughs> we need something we can do frequently and immediately. And we also have to think about that when we do this habit, what will be our reward? Because without a reward, our habits are just not going to stick. We are going to give up. We aren't going to allow that autopilot method to set in place. So that's a really important aspect. And I think the final thing that we need to consider with habits is, is it something that we're absolutely sure we can do. Now, I see traders develop habits that are just too sky high. They think they're going to trade like Ed Sakota when they've had two minutes of practice. So decide to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's number one for a habit. Number two, building strategic pauses. And if you've made a mistake, number three, Kick yourself first and then forgive yourself mm -hmm. because if you don't allow that introspective method of looking at your own habit, realising that perhaps it's led you astray, your own behaviour hasn't been what you wanted, you have to kick yourself first. And this goes against a lot of popular psychology. Everybody's up for, hey, forgive, forgive, man. You've just done it. You've, it's terrible. You know, mm -hmm. no. As traders, we need to totally focus and make sure that we don't repeat that bad effect. And the other habit is that traders keep on going. And I think this is a real tribute to having a support method and continual education. That is a real key in this world. Mm, okay, super. You talk a lot about habits there. You've read the book, I'm sure, called Atomic Habits by James oh, Clear. Oh, yes. Isn't that I brilliant? I love it. Yeah, Absolutely. it's a superb book. I must say, I, I read that book and I loved it, but I also found it frustrating in the sense that to try and achieve such diligence with habits when you've got life going on around you is not always so easy. You know, it's it, you've got, because what he's kind of trying to get at, and I suppose we also as traders want to try and aspire to some sort of ritual, habits, routine, all of these words. Um, but yet, you know, you've got life going on around you. You've got kids needing to do things. You've got things around the house. You've got your life. Life is busy, right? What I liked about what he said is how you try and create less friction in the way of good habits and yes. put a lot of friction in the way of bad habits. And that's, that's certainly something that I've tried to do with my own trading in terms of forming the good habits, trying to formulate those routines, which we need to go through as as traders. One of them is journaling. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that because we talk about habits and what to do and how, how to formulate these. What is your, your view on journaling? And do you do a lot of journaling yourself of trades that you've done and look back on them? Absolutely. I learned about journaling in my teenage years mm. and luckily as well it has been proven with science and research that this can really act as very cheap therapy mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a wonderful thing to do so in terms of general journaling I do recommend that everybody writes just keep that pen moving you would be surprised at what subconscious desires come out on the paper mm. don't try and guide it just go blah and let your inner lunatic have their 
their voice. You'll be able to spot patterns and you'll be able to also spot themes that are going to help you not step on that same rake twice. So that for general life is important, but also from a trading perspective, when you are out of a trade, consider and write down, what did I do well? And what would I do differently next time? Mm. That level of introspection, I think, is really sadly missed. I was counselling a trader just the other day and they were in a pickle. Their equity curve was dropping. And as soon as I had a look, I could actually see that there was one system that they were using that was creating a drag on the entire portfolio. So that level of introspection where you can look and see without wishing, that's what we're after. After I pointed it out, of course, he went, oh, my gosh, yes, mm. I should never trade that system ever. And I said, yeah. exactly, you should stay as far away from that particular system as you possibly can. Mm. So that's what we're talking about here we're looking at improvements in our behavior based on our own levels of introspection. Yeah, yeah. It's good to do that to, to journal. I mean, I must say, I've also found over the years as a trader, I've, you know, you write down something about every trade, every day going into the market and how your, your mind is feeling. But then what I found over years is you start to pick up habits that you, that, or things that you do well, you pick up patterns in your trading. So you pick up patterns of things that you do well consistently, but then you also start to identify patterns where you're consistently going wrong. And if you can try and weed out those things that you're doing wrong and focus on the things that you do well, then that ultimately helps you to, you know, to build up better habits, to build up a better trading system and a more robust trading system. And you'll get that from journaling and looking back at your past trades. So now I'm a big one on journaling. And I'm also not, not just in terms of the trading that you're doing, you know, what the rest of our life obviously feeds into our trading as well. It, it's, we don't, it, it's not, you know, trading and it, it doesn't operate in a silo. We are influenced by other aspects of our life, you know? So if you've had a, yeah, I don't know, fight with your wife or your husband the night before. Maybe you come into the next day not feeling so good. Or maybe you come in with yeah, you know, not not with feeling a bit of a cold or a bit bit sick or something like that. You're not necessarily in the right psychological frame of mind to be trading. Um so those kind of things are, are important. And I think you'll get that out of your out of your journaling. Yeah, it's so true. And we don't want to be either you euphoric or depressed. We mm. want to have that middle line of content, yeah. Yeah. you know, not too happy, not too sad, because mm. even if you're too happy about something, that will mean that you're not as discerning yeah. with taking the trade. Well, this is exactly something I wanted to ask you. I mean, one of the things we were going to talk about is what to do after you've taken a big loss, which is is obviously we'll talk about that. But in the in the spirit of being even keeled, yeah, you can be you can become euphoric after a big profit, or you can become deeply depressed after a big loss. And neither of those are helpful emotions, right? So let's start with them first. Let's let's deal with the big loss later. Let's first of all deal with the big big profit. Let's say you've you've made a windfall, you've done really well, you've had your best trade of the year to date, and you're feeling on top of the world. Now, what do you do going forward from this point onwards? You firstly work out, was that profit because I followed my trading plan? Mm -hmm. Now, if it was because you followed your trading plan, then kudos to you and you deserve to celebrate. You deserve to take some small percentage of that winning trade and buy something just for yourself that will remind you of that past good behaviour and give you that desire to recreate that now, let's say your profit was not because you followed your plan. Maybe you maximized your position size and it was uncalled for. It wasn't written down. You do not deserve to spend that money. And in fact, I would suggest you give a chunk of it away. Give it away to the charity gods, because if you do not give yourself some physical representation of I did not follow my plan you are likely to fly off the handle next time you don't follow your plan it could be catastrophic 
Mm. Okay. And then a big loss. What do we talk? What do we do after a big loss? We've all taken them. We've all suffered big losses from time to time. That's the and if you haven't and you're a beginner trader, your day will come. It's the way it goes. Sometimes things blow through a guaranteed stop loss order. You know, that's the only way that you can punch in that actual stop level. If you've got just a normal stop on in the markets it might go through underneath that stop and that can happen. Mm. Or maybe you haven't set a stop. That's another aspect to it as well. I would suggest you journal on it and I'll perhaps give you a quick seven day little technique you can use. Firstly, day one, Describe your pain in excruciating detail. Make it incredibly graphic. If you're so sad you want to cry, I've been there. I Mm -hmm. cried under my doona over a $238 loss once, cried and cried and cried for hours because of what it represented. You know, maybe it represents that I'm going to have to go back and get another job because I can't trade. Clearly I can't trade. Mm. No, no. So let those emotions out. Describe everything you're feeling. And then the next day, write in your journal, as I mentioned, what did I do well and what would I do differently? So you're trying to take a step back, get a little bit of objectivity. Day three, plunge right on in there again with the pain. Describe any pain that you haven't described in day one. You're trying to get it all out. By day three, you will have processed things a little. Your brain will have gone, but you did this wrong too. And then you did this wrong, like that little devil on your shoulder. So you want to have a written documentation of that agony. It'll get better, I promise. Okay, I'm not just leading us down into a dark pit. (laughs) Day four, ask you yourself, if this situation was totally my fault, what lessons could I take from this to apply in the future? Now, this is triggering off an internal versus external locus of control concept. So in psychology, Internal locus of control is where we say to ourselves, it was all my fault, the profit or the loss, okay? It's all my fault, okay? Very healthy thing to do. You are looking after the areas you can control. And an external locus of control is you blame your brother-in-law, you blame your spouse, Mm. you blame your broker. (laughs) The markets, yes, the weather, you know, my dog, oh, anybody apart from me. So as traders, we do want to develop that internal locus of control. So finding the lessons from that locus of control, I think is a very important step. Then day five, talk to yourself about self-care. What are you doing to soothe your body and your mind? Do you need a massage? Do you need to have a long bath? Find something that you can physically use as a release. Day six, do a future self post. The way that I do it is I say it is December 1st, three years into the future, let's say. Mm -hmm. Name the date and say at the time I didn't realize it, but that loss that I took on this day was the best thing that ever happened to me and say why. You're trying to plant the seed that you could have learned from this loss and develop that for your future self. And then day seven, review those past seven days, read everything that you've written. You will have in that little seven day method found a way of feeling your pain, understanding it, getting to the end of it, applying the lessons and then moving into the future so that you can future pace and realize that you can live as a trader another day. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Louise, we're getting towards the end of our allotted time for this podcast. So I just want to give it to the listeners and the viewers who who are watching this. Uh, How can they follow your work? And just tell us a little bit about the books that you've written as well, because you've written five books on the stock market. I'd love to just unpack those a little bit. If you've got them there to show us, um, sure. I'd love to see them. Uh, I've not read it's any of your books secrets. and I'd love to see them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Trading Secrets by Louise Bedford. Trading Secrets. Right. Yes. Um, that would be the perfect place to start. Um, this teaches you all about what you need to do to apply an effective trading system and to make sure that you can stick with it. So I'm talking about entry, 
exit position sizing and trading psychology. So follow it up with this one, charting secrets. Okay. So charting secrets is like the teacher's edition that you wish you had when you were a kid going through school. I take you through different charts. You get to analyze them. And then I tell you exactly how I analysed them. Right. So if you're a beginner trader or even intermediate, they would be the two that I would suggest to start. I do have others, but they are the ones. But also come and follow me on my podcast. Yeah. Already you're a podcast listener. You're listening to Garth's wonderful podcast. Come and visit me at Talking Trading dot com dot au because i'm in australia talking trading dot com dot au i'd love to see you you can send me an email tell me that you've heard the show i would absolutely love that it brings joy to my heart to see traders transform from people who have self-doubt into confident trading machines Great. And then, of course, I can also follow you on www.tradinggame.com.au as well, where you've got that mentor program. You say it's a six-month repeat-for-free mentor program. Just tell us a little bit about that, please. Sure. Look, my mentor program is so close to my heart. I started that with my business partner, Chris Tate, um, over two decades ago. And it's been wonderful because it is a repeat for free course. We have had that trading community with us every step of the way. I have seen changes in traders' lives with the schools they send their children to, with the holidays that they go on. Full-time traders have been created. People have been able to retire early because a lot of those areas are the things that we really do want to pursue and those objectives are worthy. So come and register if you want a free trading plan template on tradinggame.com.au and I'll give you my free trading plan template. And Garth, maybe you could do the same because my listeners would love to get in touch with you. Tell us more about your show. Yeah, so it's, uh, well, mine is Talking With Traders. It's available on all the main uh, podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple, uh, also YouTube, because we are putting these up on YouTube now as well. So that's where listeners and viewers can follow that. Um, and then my own website is traderscorner.co.za. I'm South African originally, I still am, but I live in the UK, based in, in London now. Uh, but my focus is predominantly predominantly South African clients, building a focus on UK clients as well. But my my analysis and the market strategies that I do and the what we call a daily game plan, which is a market trading plan for each day, is uh, mainly focused on the South African market. And then we also take a look at the S&P 500 as well as an index to trade. So that's kind of where my focus lies. And I've loved it getting to know you better. Do you know the thing that I think is at both of our cause is that we want to help people become more effective traders mm. with less pain, more ease, so that they can have those results going into the future. So yeah. I do commend you for all the good work you're doing, Garth. You're creating magic. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Louise. I appreciate that. And likewise, it's been fantastic speaking to you. So thanks very much for your time. I look forward to publishing this podcast. And then obviously we're going to be sharing it. So it'll be a podcast. This will be on your podcast as well, and it's going to become part of the video content of some of the education work that you're doing in Australia as well. So that's fantastic all around. Louise, thanks again for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Terrific. You're listening to Talking With Traders, a podcast series brought to you by IG, a world-leading online trading and investment provider. If you haven't checked out the IG online trading platform, please do so and visit IG.com. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast series on your favorite podcast app or website by clicking on the subscribe button and you'll be notified weekly as we release new episodes. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Talking With Traders brought to you by IG, a world leading CFD provider. We really are privileged to have such a leader in the field of online trading involved in this series. Please follow us on Facebook and engage with us there. And a reminder to make sure you subscribe to this series by clicking on the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we'd also appreciate if you'd leave a review on the app too. Till next time.